Well, looking at the presidential race, there are big differences in the positions and experiences of Donald Trump and Hillary Clinton, especially in terms of foreign affairs. Political scientist and director of the International Studies Center at the University of Wyoming, Jean Garrison, recently moderated an international panel of experts on the subject. She shared her observations with Erlanda Jacinto. So what are the differences between a Trump administration and a Clinton administration's foreign policy, and how do they fit in the traditional um, United States policies? Well, let me start with the second part of your question, and that is that post-Cold War, we had a series of presidents who were pretty similar, and I would even put George W. Bush in that, in that uh, list. When you look at the second term of George W. Bush, you have American multilateralism, belief in American exceptionalism, trying to promote American interests and American values around the world. And in general, there's an awful lot of continuity in American foreign policy. The other part of that, however, is that we've had divided government for a good 25 plus years now. And that means that any president who's trying to operate in foreign policy or make decisions has to bring along the Congress. And so anybody who becomes president, whether it's Donald Trump or Hillary Clinton, will have to face that divided government. And that might be pretty difficult for both of them. Uh, Donald Trump is being panned as being very different. And certainly uh, one of the difficulties in, in pegging uh, Donald Trump administration foreign policy is that he says a lot of contradictory things. He's beginning to have some pretty standard messages about promoting American interests, putting America first. Um, and then at the same time, he'll, he'll talk about supporting allies, but he'll also, in a sense, get into Twitter wars <laughs> with allies. So there's a little bit of an unpredictability to Trump, and that's where some of the concern has come from the American foreign policy establishment. Hillary Clinton will be a continuation of Barack Obama's foreign policies, which I would note is also a pretty much a continuation of uh, George W. Bush's second term foreign policy. So not a lot of difference out of Hillary Clinton, multilateralism, promotion of American exceptionalism, I've already said that, but um, pretty tried and true. Uh, American interests, promoting American interests. I think both candidates talk about promoting American interests, however. Which one would be more successful in uniting the Congress? Oh, well, <laughs> um, probably Hillary Clinton, simply hmm. because she's been a senator. She has relationships with um, members of the Senate and some in the House that go back to her time in the Congress. Um, she is coming out of, she's considered a much more standard um, actor and she's a hard worker and has that reputation so she has those relationships and Donald Trump doesn't have those relationships but a president's success has an awful lot to do with who he or she puts in office with them in terms of advisors so it would really be the responsibility of the foreign policy team whether it's Secretary of State, Secretary of Defense and the advisors on the White House staff to build those relationships and to act on behalf of whoever is president. Uh, one of the major concerns is terrorism. Um, mm -hmm. Who would be more adequate for this concern? Um, I, you know, this or is there's a fear that, that Trump would be trigger happy. Yeah, I, th I think that, um, oddly enough, in some ways, I, I think there's a difference in style between Hillary Clinton and Donald Trump. I think Donald Trump likes to say some things he'd like to do that he'd go after. And within the first 30 days, he has a plan and he'd go after ISIS. Um, and he would have to face um, some of the concerns people would have about boots on the ground. Hillary Clinton has talked about no boots on the ground, but both of them would be trying to find the most effective policy to address challenges to American security. So I, I think in some ways terrorism has, you know, sometimes terrorism and, and the politics of fear take over a campaign. A lot of that's actually faded in the last several weeks just because there are character <laughs> issues that are being discussed on both sides, but I'm not willing to say who would be most effective because honestly, I think they'd be pretty similar. Why would they be similar? Well, they'd be similar because there's only so many things you can do in order to be effective. I think Donald Trump would figure out that you can't simply say you're going to bomb ISIS into the ground when you think about the collateral damage that would take place. Collateral damage means human beings, and when you have ISIS fighters next to civilians, there's an awful lot of unacceptable loss that you would have, so there could be a backlash there. So I think anybody who is coming into office, particularly when they're not experienced yet, need to be listening to their advisors and the military advisors and some of the intelligence officials that would be coming in and talking about what are the effective opportunities. Uh, Hillary Clinton would argue that she already knows, <laughs> given her experience, she already knows some of those answers and in some ways might move more quickly, but I mean, terrorism is a very tough uh, policy issue. 
Um, and in all honesty, it's not the biggest challenge facing the United States. It just, again, politics of fear, it gets, gets elevated because dramatic events. There are reasons, and I think very recently we've had the 15 year anniversary of 9-11, so it's back in our minds again, and that makes sense. Is immigration another one that's a politics of fear? Oh, you think, it, okay, it depends on the perspective. Um, I think there's an awful lot of platitudes, an awful lot of rhetoric being thrown around about um, immigration. There's a lot of, frankly, falsehoods being said about how many, um, how many refugees are getting into the United States. It's pretty clear that the U.S. government is concerned about the nature of people who immigrate to the United States. That's why there's a two-year vetting process for people coming in. There is a difference in policy, however, with these two candidates. Hillary Clinton wants to bring in uh, tens of thousands following UN recommendations. Uh, she is coming from the perspective that it's the, the United States has partial responsibility in creating some of the refugee flows and challenges, and it's part about being in solidarity with your allies in Europe. Donald Trump is, has talked about putting up a fence to keep uh, illegal immigrants out. That's a very different kind of immigrant, of course. It has nothing to do with really with terrorism. It's, it's about illegal immigration in that context. But it all gets conflated and put together. Um, yeah, he's a very different uh, choice for uh, voters on, on the immigration issue. From both candidates, which one would be more effective in fighting terrorism? It's a really thorny problem for both candidates. They both have to think about cooperating with our, <clears throat> excuse me, with our allies, and it's not simply a matter of going, uh, going into the Middle East and thinking about bombing them. So we need to be thinking about having prudent policies and, and working with allies. So it's a hard, diff very difficult question for both candidates. What are the, the issues facing American foreign policy? I think the central issue facing American foreign policy, it really isn't terrorism, it isn't some of the disagreements across the candidates, it's really looking at putting our own house in order. We have a huge rising debt, we have schools which uh, have severe challenges. We need to be thinking about putting our own house in order and that's the means to promote American interests and to make us an effective policy actor on the world stage. Thank you so much for being with us today, Professor Garrison. Thank you for having me.